Well, here in Alice, the culture is strong. I'm born and bred from Alice, so we've grown up with the cultural experience and background here. If a, an Indigenous person from another state or another town come into Alice Springs, they've got to adapt to our cultural stuff here. They've got to learn gradually the longer they stay, they'll all pick it up and, and but most of them do. Most of them will come in, come in and respect our, our wishes here. Thank you. It's a good thing that they chose Alice Springs for yes, because of our Indigenous population. And I mean, we've got, I think, hundreds of applications like registered with us. You can come straight in and we can get you into work and we can also assist you. Okay, so, yeah, I rang up CDU, spoke to Sharon in regards to... These girls are always smiling and how you going and, you know, stuff like that and they all know you. Whereas the other mob, it's like, oh, what's your name again? Most of the people on the caseloads, I know them all personally. So I know who's been in work, um, who can hold a job and who can't, who's not quite ready, who hasn't had much experience and who needs to further themselves. With AES, we're supposed to support our clients. So we work one-on-one -on -one to give them that confidence and that trust in us to say, yep, they're really keen on us working, no matter the outcome. A lot of job networks are only interested in numbers, where my biggest interest in the AES is to get more and more and more Indigenous people employed. With AES, we're entitled to pick our clients up if they're in work, two weeks max, and this is just until we sort out transport, so we just um, get them on the road. Look at him, look at him, the camera's looking at him, get inside. So by picking them up and showing them, yep, this is how you do it, if they see that I can be on time, they go, right, well, Tanya's gotten us to work on time. This is how we've got to be every morning. I think probably, in a sense, it's a role model. Bye. Yeah. Oh, that, they've been really good. Like, when Tanya started working, I just went straight in, put in, got Tanya to help me do my resume up, got my you know, files all together, and I just told her what jobs I wanted to look for, but I really wanted to do hospitality, be something different because there's not a lot of Aboriginal people in hospitality, mm. see. So that, so that the NCAC is the actual website? With all my clients, um, motivation. A lot of them aren't work ready, so they need motivation. What year you said you went up to? Nine. Like a lot of the older ones, the their downfall is their literacy side and their communication barrier. I, mean, I gave them good feedback, and then I told them how reliable and that you turn up for... Um, I feel for Elizabeth because um, you can see in her, in her resume and her previous jobs that she has worked at the hospital and, and at the CEDAP office and here and there and everywhere. Um, I know she speaks English because her and I talk a lot. I don't know, she's, I've seen her do written. So she's, she's pretty good, but her only, it's her communication to talk louder and more direct in that. So just to try to bring her out of that shell would be good. But she's, she's keen on, that's one girl I'd probably recommend for working is because she'll go out there and give anything a go. When I went to reference for her, I said, look, if he's give her a go, you know, for two weeks, put on a two weeks trial or something like that, and you can see what she can bring to the work workplace. So I'll see you back here next week, yeah. same time. I like my job. I've got quite a few placements. I'm quite proud of myself. My clients are really satisfied. All righty? Yep. See you then. All right. I reckon we need to grow. AES, the office, I reckon, I mean, we should put another EC in and um, say another office, and I reckon to let it grow that way because our population here, we're going to need that.